Hello everyone, I'm Fabio Montella. I'm one of the librarians here at the college. And today we're going to be talking about virtual reality, how it's being used in education, more specifically how we're using it here at Suffolk. I'd like to start off with the definition of virtual reality because there are a lot of definitions out there. But this one that I actually found in one of our, our databases, our wonderful library databases, I think really captures what I would like the audience to know. So a virtual reality system is an interactive technology setup, software, hardware, peripheral devices, and other items that act as a human to computer interface and immerses its user in a computer generated three dimensional environment. Virtual reality, however, and this is the difference, is the environment or the world that the user experiences while using such a system. So virtual reality system is what really brings it together. Virtual reality is the environment that we step into when we start using virtual reality. So this here is our virtual reality lab. It's been around since about the spring of 2018. So it's a few semesters under our belt. It's growing, it's progressing. We're learning from it. Uh, we're taking everything that we're learning into consideration. Now, before we started this lab, we obviously did some research. There was some internal research. We wanted to know, is it something the students need? Is it something the students um, might even want to use? It's something viable. So we had to really consider students, faculty, and all other aspects. We also did a SUNY-wide look at the research out there. And there were a couple of task groups out there, a couple of focus groups that really just looked at virtual reality as a whole within the SUNY system. And it was actually quite promising. Um, not just what's going on today, but what they're projecting to happen in the future is also very promising. And we also did somewhat of a comprehensive literature review just to find out more about virtual reality in education as a whole and also in general within society. Um, virtual reality has really grown a lot within the last few years. It's been around for a long time, believe it or not, but the amount of growth that's happened within the last five or six years uh, is, is really unprecedented. So I think that's going to be the new trajectory going forward. So you're going to see it a lot more um, in other fields. We know that Video games really sort of took the market with virtual reality. Now you see the film industry really using it. But education isn't too far behind. Um, and I, I think, like I said, that growth is going to continue. So like every lab, this is the space, but we need hardware for virtual reality. And this is some of the hardware we have. This is a Spectra of VR goggles. These are very inexpensive. They're very similar to the Google Cardboard, which anybody ever seen. So basically, what the way this works is you slide your iPhone in there. You would download a virtual reality app off of any smartphone, and this just becomes sort of like the encasement for that virtual reality environment. It's still very much a new technology, considering how, how long it's been along, but it's not bad quality at all compared to some of the other uh, devices that we have. It still lags behind. So some of the other devices we have, the Oculus Go. This one is also very popular. We're seeing a lot of commercials for this now. They're using it a lot for Netflix, Hulu. So um, again, the film industry is really sort of invested in this. Uh, and this is an all-in-one. What I mean by that is that the computer system, everything is in here. So you can take this out to the park. You can take it home to work. You're not bound in by, by the borders that the third system, which I'll go over in a little bit, really has. So with this, you put it on. You download the apps. And wherever you go, you're inside that virtual world. And of course, the third one that we have here, which I think is probably the best quality of the three, and really sort of um, is emblematic of this lab, is the HTC Vive. And this, again, is works off of two sensors, and it gives you um, boundaries. There is a perimeter which in you can work. So if you were to step, say, outside of that, you lose that virtual world. Once you're in it, you're back in it. Um, and again, this quality is phenomenal. Everything else I showed you, it does have really good quality, but this is sort of above and beyond. And, um, Oculus and other companies are also creating stuff to mimic this because they do realize that right now the technology, if you best want to utilize it, you would have to work within the sensors and the boundaries. Platforms. So we have the hardware, we have the space, but we have to buy the applications. So virtual reality, much like any type of media, whether it's uh, film or video games, you have to buy the movie, you have to buy the video game. With virtual reality, you have to buy the app. So there are three platforms that we use. And the first one, Steam VR, it's probably the largest platform out there. It just looks like this. And as you can see, this is predominantly catering to the video game industry. I'd say about 90% of the apps on here are for video game enthusiasts. But there are many educational uh, apps on here. And it's sort of like searching for it. And as librarians, we do that anyway. You know, we're always trying to find information, see what's viable, look for it. So it's no different with this, um, this platform. We go on there, and we sort of have to browse and vet these sources and find out what it is that we can best use. The second one that we use is Viveport. Viveport 
is actually created by the HTC Vive, the system we have here, and it's specifically for that particular hardware. Now there are apps that work with more than just that. They might work with the Oculus or a different type of hardware. But again, this particular platform is meant for anybody who wants to find games just for the HTC Vive. It's actually the same company. And what's beautiful about this is that they have a section that is just for education. So we have 364 apps that are just for education. We have everything from Anatomy, uh, Gravity Sketch, uh, Spacewalk, Operation Apex. So again, they sort of break it down for entertainment, um, relaxation, meditation, but then again, they have an entire section dedicated just to education. So again, we're starting to see that these companies are also catering to the education field. And the third one is the Oculus Go. Much like the Vive port created their own platform, Oculus said, well, we want one that's specifically for our games as well. And here we have one for the Oculus Go. And it, just like Vive port, they decided that they wanted a section specifically for education. Now, they're pretty much similar, but I feel like Oculus, even though um, it came on later, their apps tend to be more geared towards education. Whereas Viveport, they do put apps on there that they claim to be for education, but they're more, in my opinion, sort of um, a gimmick. It's education, but it's more attracted to the students to entertain them. These ones are really specific to learning. Again, we have the anatomy ones, we have Mars, uh, prehistory, space flight, and things of that nature. So again, those are the three platforms that we usually use here at the library. I'm sure there'll be more coming forth as this, um, this technology progresses, but these are the ones that um, most people are using. And again, if you ever want to find an app that you think might be good for a lesson or something that you want to teach, ask a librarian and we'll browse it for you. So these are some of the apps that we're currently using here at Suffolk today. This is an anatomy and physiology app, and these are just some screenshots from the app. Here we have the human eye, and it shows you all of the nerves and everything else attached to it. Here we have the human heart and all the veins, the arteries. Now mind you, these are screenshots in 2D. Now you have to just picture a student stepping into this in a 3D environment, and they're not just looking at this eye, they're watching it twitch, they're watching it blink, they're watching all the nerves move. They can move around it, they can go above it, below it. So it is very, very much immersive. And the reaction that these students have when they step into these env environments for me, that's what makes virtual reality uh, such an effective tool for education. Even with the heart, you can go there, you can watch it beat. And I mean, you can watch a video of that, yes. But to actually be near that heart and you're watching it beat in your face, you can go around it and see different angles of it. I think that's really what makes this tool so effective. Uh, let me just open up this one app to show you what these students see when they go in there. So this is what they're seeing. Now again, keep in mind we are seeing the 2D version, but this is all in 3D. This is all part of it. The human body, it sort of changes from skeleton to muscle back to human form. Um, the human brain is another part of it. So it's just all things that these students are experiencing. History. There are a lot of history apps out there that we're using as well. On the right, we have one called Discover Egypt. It sort of brings you inside the, the pyramids themselves and you're watching some of these tombs like King Tut. Um, and it's just a different way of viewing it. Rather than seeing it in some exhibit, here we're watching it as it was inside the actual pyramid itself. On the left is a very profound app, the Anne Frank House. Uh, we all know the story of Anne Frank. This app brings you inside the house where Anne Frank hid from the Nazis for several years. And just walking through it, being in that 3D environment, you almost sense what she was feeling at the time. Um, it's, again, it's profound. It might be a, a little too... Um, too jarring for some people, but again, it's just the whole point of that experience. We all know what happened, we've all read about it, but now we're feeling it, we're experiencing it to some degree.
Now, to me, this was one of the most um, profound apps when I tried it. And I remember specifically when your body section with the stairs and a little section under the stairs there. And you can go there and you're looking under it and it's dark and it's hidden and you almost picture maybe with fear running through her trying to hide there or even near the table thinking, you know, I'm eating my meal here, but I need to get back to my hiding place. Um, so yeah, these, some of these apps, they really are very artistic and, and they're meant to deliver a message and they do it very, very effectively. Current issues. A lot of artists, a lot of um, scholars are using virtual reality now to promote these current issues, make people aware of it. On the left, you see uh, uh, something called 6x9, the virtual experience of solitary confinement. And this is through the Oculus Go. And this particular app puts you inside a solitary confinement cell. And you're in there, you're seeing how small it is, and even just two minutes, then you start to think to yourself, well, what's it like being in here for days on end, even for hours? And then on the wall, they write things like, I was in here for cursing. I was in here for smoking a cigarette. Just little things, any little thing. And it really, again, it's, it's meant to sort of deliver that message. This social commentary that, that virtual reality is capable of delivering, it's something that I think our students need to experience, and it's something that they're going to you know, really relate with. On the right, this is an app that brings you inside a refugee camp. It's the Rohingya uh, refugee camp. So not only are you reading about this or hearing about this, now you're inside that virtual reality camp alongside these refugees. You're not just hearing about the conditions. You're not just you know, reading about them or seeing them. You're experiencing them to some degree. You know, you're, you're sitting there watching a child who is covered in filth and might have nothing to eat and is crying. Right? And again, I, I think this is very important for today's society because we have so much information. We read about things. We hear about them. We watch them on TV that we sort of become immune to them. It's like, yeah, it's a refugee. I've heard about that. Well, sometimes we need to step back and realize what is it like to actually have empathy for that, to realize what they're going through. And virtual reality gives us that chance. We can go into these refugee camps now, and granted, it's by no means near what they're experiencing, but it brings us a little closer to understanding what they're going through. Faculty collaborations, and that's really, I think, the strength of virtual reality here at Suffolk, is when we collaborate with our, with our great faculty and try to come up with uh, ways that we could use virtual reality to better serve our students. And here we have prefer, uh, Professor Meredith Starr, who's been using virtual reality since the fall of 2018. She's done some phenomenal work. She's a great professor, and this only really enhances her work. So she's brought in her Drawing 1 students and her 2D design students. So for her 2D design, she had an objective in mind. She wanted uh, students to create artwork for social commentary. Examples of that we just saw with um, the refugee camp or even um, the solitary confinement. So she wanted them to create their own social commentary work, but she wanted it to be a scaffolding event where they maybe got an example of it and see what other artists are doing. Something to get maybe those creative juices going. So she decided to use two apps. One is Rachel Rosen's Man Mask, and the second is uh, Ali Asami's Death Toll Experience. And we used two types of hardware for this. We did use the HTC Vive inside this environment. But then for the first one, she also had her students use the Spectra VR goggles, because Rachel Rosen's Man Mask is available through a smartphone. You just download the app, put it here, and you can watch it, which gave her students the, the opportunity to view this at home or at their own time. Because these Spectra VR goggles, not only are they inexpensive, we also have them here at the library, and you can check them out and bring them back. So you don't have to necessarily do it here at uh, Suffolk. OK, so Rachel Rosen's Man Mask, uh, commissioned as part of the new museum at Rizome's First Look Artist VR, Rachel Rosen's Man Mask is a guided meditation on happiness through a soldier-populated ethereal dream world. Now on the right, I have an image of the actual uh, app that you download on your smartphone. Believe it or not, you can't view this on your smartphone without that viewer. And the viewer is basically just a lens in a box, but the way these apps are created, that if you try to view it without it, you can't. You, the artist doesn't want you to view it unless it's in that virtual or 3D environment because, again, it really adds to the emphasis and it adds to the artist's message. And the second one, Ali Aslami's Death Toll Experience, that one, unfortunately, you had to come into the lab to view it. Um, with Death Toll's Experience, virtual reality artist Ali Aslami is seeking to resensitize the general public to the reality behind the abstract statistics on the hundreds of thousands of deaths in the Middle East. And here we have some stills from the actual app. You can see the streets of the Middle East lined in body bags. And then we have the beaches um, somewhere in the Middle East with body bags as well. And this artist really um, did well in delivering this message. Very basic message. We hear about death in the Middle East. We all know that it's happening. 
but just how much do we know in terms of numbers? You know, we have an abstract idea, but we won't really want to quantify it. And I tell you, when these students were, basically you sit there and you're floating through this area and watching all these, these body bags. Some of them took that off. They said, I can't watch any more of this. Um, again, it's not meant for everybody, but again, the artist, artist did deliver a message that he thinks needed to be known. And the students themselves really got inspired by that. And that inspiration translates over to their own social commentary projects. So I think that was just a very effective uh, technique by Professor Starr and it worked out very well because they came out with some really good um, social commentary artworks. And these are just some of the apps that they said, um, some of the comments rather on these apps that the students uh, commented on. Using VR allowed me to become a part of the artist experience. Virtual reality has a much greater impact on a person since they are now so they say, now get to live in the film. Uh, seeing those socially engaged artworks in virtual reality gave me a much more realistic idea of the artist's message than other forms of art that could have been presented. So I just loved some of these comments because they're really telling you how they feel. And the third one, in VR you can examine and almost feel and fell almost all elements of five senses. The sounds and interactiveness made it so much more personal. I could see myself getting lost in time with VR, which is great. And again, this person was speaking about the flow that can occur when engaged in a meaningful artistic process. And then finally, VR was unreal. It was an escape and device for de-stressing and peaceful relaxation. So her drawing one students had a very different um, objective. She wanted a collaborative drawing in a 3D space, which is perfect for VR because we're always working in a 3D space. But she wanted them to work on something together. So for that, we decided to use the Google Tilt Brush. And the Google Tilt Brush is used with the HTC V Vive. And your two controllers act, one as your palette, and one as your brush. So rather than having a space to paint, the entire area becomes your space. So you can paint around you, over you, under you. And what Professor Starr wanted them to do was have one student come up, use the HTC Vive, the Tilt Brush, start something, stop, have somebody else jump in, continue it, and sort of build this like, giant mural in 3D space, if you will. And the result was amazing. I mean, this is somewhere along the beginning. Somebody drew a horse with wings, and then it just started to progress and progress. These, again, these are just screenshots. It's really hard to capture all of it, but this artwork probably spanned the space of the room. Everything from, I think there was a volcano, there was a skeleton that was dancing, there was a unicorn. Um, and with the HTC Vive, you can also download these images and you could put them onto a 3D printer and have them actually printed out. So um, that worked out very effectively for the students as well. So now that we went through all that, I always say, who wants to go for a ride? And the reason I say that is because when anybody, anybody is looking to experience virtual reality for the first time, we went over some wonderful apps, but I always say, ride a roller coaster. Well, why is that? Well, if it's your first time experiencing virtual reality, you want something that really captures uh, the immersive nature of it, the engagement of it, and also the realistic uh, aspect of it. And nothing does that better than a uh, roller coaster ride. Um, so I can demonstrate it for you, but I would love to have some volunteers at the end. I see some faces of excitement, some faces of fear, which is always what we get from uh, the audience, but I think that's where we are at this point. So I'm gonna demonstrate the roller coaster ride first, and then if we want any volunteers, are more than welcome to have it. No matter how many times you do this, you still get very loopy. And we're about to descend. Just <laughs>
this weren't virtual reality, I probably would not be doing it. So that's just a small sample of what virtual reality has to offer. Um, there is a lot more out there. If you see with the virtual reality education apps, we have hundreds upon hundreds, and they keep growing more and more every day. And believe it or not, some of the other apps that they don't really deem education worthy, there are obviously lessons within that. So there's a lot that can be done with it. So please, if anybody has any questions, if anybody would like to use virtual reality, simply see a librarian here at the library. We can always um, custom tailor something to fit your specific needs.